Well, my name is Strider Patton. I am a visual artist and anthropologist and educator. Got a master's degree in anthropology and social change, and I'm a self-taught artist. Within those two worlds, I weave together um, a very social conscious style of visual art through painting and sculpture into all my work. Never been to any art school. Um, yeah, self-taught, but my dad is an artist, so I grew up in a very arts-friendly household, and he's definitely helped me in just being able to like see the world and think creatively and how to like put that down. Something unique about outdoor doing murals and things is, you know, it's not it's not just a blank canvas. You know, walls already have character. They already have like windows or cracks or bricks in them. And so like being able to paint on a wall, it's very informed by the place, by that wall, because it already has character on it. San Francisco has been, from what I understand, historically kind of a place for people who live in different countercultures to come. It's been a home for people who felt like they didn't have a home before. I mean, every few blocks, it's like a totally different area with like different style and vibe and you can feel it. You can feel it when you walk around or see it. Unfortunately, right now, there's a lot of artists leaving the city and that's due to high rent costs. It's one of the most expensive places, if not in the United States right now. And with that, um, artists are leaving at a very large scale. Hi, my name is David Middlebrook. I'm a sculptor and a former university educator, professor of art. Street art is extremely hard to market. When I was teaching graduate school, I had a couple of graffiti artists in the program, and I talked to them about that, and they said the only hope they have is either videos to record their work or publications. I think it's very difficult to be a wealthy or successful financially uh, street artist. I think it would be very difficult. So. For a long time, uh, like a lot of creatives and artists I know, like I was doing my artwork and then I had a part-time job uh, doing whatever else. Um, bartended for a while and um, you know that was just like a steady income and then every once in a while I'd sell a painting or make a mural or something that was a little extra. I was just like I felt myself just like being torn between these two worlds and it's like you want the safety of like guaranteed job payment but my heart doesn't, it's not, my heart's not in it, like bartending or something. It's like, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, it still has its ups and downs between, you know, jobs, but man, you know, a lot of um, like graffiti writers I know, they, you know, they work like two, two, three jobs to, you know, pay the bills and be able to buy their materials and paint and go out and paint. And then like the second they start to sell something, they get called a sellout by all their like peers. And it's like, what? Man, like if you can create a painting or a mural and sell it and you don't have to like bartend on the side, like what's wrong with that? I think that's great. But I think it's beautiful. I think creativity is the most underutilized human characteristic and I think it can do powerful things in the world and I think we need to take care of our creatives and pay them very well. So this piece is one of my favorites. Uh, it means the most to me because I, I really love doing the research. I got to come out and sit down with a local woman who runs the newspaper, interview her about the history of the Bayview community and um, she told me this incredible um, you know, story about uh, the local people, the local culture, and you can see it's like the closest one, it has gray there, and then I have home written, H-O-M-E, and then an unfinished house. Because of the large um, you know, history of people being you know, a strong construction kind of community, working class community, that have been kind of forced to leave, I have an unfinished house uh, representing, you know, the history of these people and what's kind of going on currently. Because there's just block after block of these kind of buildings around here, so it'd be cool for this whole neighborhood to start to be, you know, bursting with color and hopefully a lot of it, you know, has good story behind it too. 
Um, I teach weekly at an incredible nonprofit called Larkin Street Youth Services, and they're, I think, over 40 years old, um, a group, an organization that works with homeless youth. So what we're doing is painting our mural on a plywood panel at Larkin Street headquarters so we can just stay there and take our time and over a couple weeks uh, paint it and then we'll go and install it there. Similar stuff, I'm on my work to really dive into reminding us of our shared humanity. Hello, I'm Colin Peterson. I'm a local San Francisco artist born in the Bay Area. I'm literally homeless. So I've, before this I was in Portland and I came here. It's probably like April and um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering uh, how do you how do you get by in the night? How do I get by in the night? Um, well, <laughs> that's kind of a confusing question. Um, I don't know. Specifically in the night, you just gotta uh, try your best to like find a place or. You know, some people are really good at, like, crashing on other people's couches in a respectful or disrespectful way. But, you know, getting through there, getting through it, you just gotta basically take it one step at a time, you know. Something that I don't really like about it is, you know, you gotta live more day to day, but uh, stuff like stuff like this and, like, Meeting people helps me be more proactive, you know. You know, I want to tell you to keep creating and, you know, conquering borders between, between humans. You know, we're all we're all individuals, and um, we we all deserve the best. So be empathetic and be creative, be thoughtful, be loving, um, be passionate, and be yourself. You know.